of this evening's Good Tradition Awards, given for an outstanding contribution to the continuation of traditional folk music. To present the award, a writer and broadcaster who currently co-presents Radio 6 Music's afternoon show alongside Mark Radcliffe, one of the first shows to move to the BBC's new base here in Salford Quays, just a stone's throw away from where we are right now at the Lowry. Please welcome Stuart McConey. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, yes, folk music is the people's music. It is just as much the music of the urban working class and their struggles and passions as it is the music of the village inn and the farm. It's not just about linden leaves and leafy bowers, but forges and foundries and factories and blocks of flats. The recipient of this good achievement award has always known this and always asserted it, always sung the loves and labours of all ordinary people wherever they are. He was born in Aberdeen, but moved with his family to Birmingham in the 1940s, where, along with his sister Lorna, he became involved with the Clarion Singers, a socialist community choir which in turn begat the folk group which bore his name and became a kind of mother load for a, a generation of the new British folk revival of the 1950s. Dave Swarbrick learned his trade here. Um, Dave Pegg as well. And while many folkies of the time affected and understandable but geographically wonky identification with sharecroppers and porch stompers, dust bowls and delta bluesmen, this group pointed out that the stuff of folk could be found much closer to home, in the pit head, at the pub, the post office, the shop, the dole queue even. We live in a culture where increasingly it seems entertainment and mass popular music exists either to distract us, to massage the egos of the already rich and powerful, or to bolster the status quo, however unfair that might be. Folk music and the music of tonight's award winner comes from an entirely different place, a better place of dissent, of compassion, of solidarity and of humanity and of popularity. This good tradition award winner has never merely wanted to preach to the converted. He's never been afraid of having the odd hit single, just like his famous sons, which should give even the drunkest of you a big clue, as if you haven't already guessed, as to who has won this award. Tonight, this Good Tradition Award goes to a genuine pioneer, a, hedge, a hero, a legend of the people's music, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Campbell. What a nice introduction, eh? Now, I know that some of you have got a problem. Here was this, this lovely introduction, and there's an item. Ian Campbell, singer, writer, activist, organiser, legend. And most of you are thinking, oh yeah, he's a legend. Why the hell have I never heard of him? <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I haven't had a good write-up like that now for about 15, 20 years. And the reason is very simple. I was an enormously influential force in the folk song revival in the 1960s. You remember the... Si no, you don't, know. <laughs> right? And it's true enough. We were enormously influential in the 60s, me and my group and the 70s, but in 1980, we packed in. For a variety of reasons, deaths, divorces, various things in the group, and we collapsed and folded. And here's a very strange thing. In 19, 1980, I had made 19 LPs. That's an achievement, because you don't get to make a second one if your first one didn't sell, and, the th and so on. Right? So I'd made 19. And they'd sold very respectably in the folk scene 50, 60, 70,000 copies we would sell of an album. Wow! In the folk scene, huge. Well, ha, I had four sons, and two of them had started this little reggae group. <laughs> and, yeah, and they got together, and they made. They recorded an album of reggae songs. Yeah, reggae. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then they issued it. 
and it went out. And it was quite popular. <laughs> and it got into the charts. Not the folk charts by 60, 70,000, no. No, no, it got into the top 20. So then they took one track out of it and issued it as a single. And it got into the top 10. Well, the result was 1980, UB40, on their first album, outsold my 19 albums. <laughs> <laughs> And possibly that's why you've never heard of me. <laughs> and now for some more 